Alabama's WVUA News at 5 with your award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Terry Brewer, weather with Richard Scott, and sports with Gary Harris. Coming up in home team weather, it is hot on this Tuesday afternoon. 84 in Tuscaloosa, 84 back in Reform, and 83 in Birmingham. What about the rest of the week in terms of temperatures? And how about some rain chance by the weekend? Your forecast is coming up. Today marks 11 months since Alabama was hit with the April 27th storms. We will hear from Tuscaloosa Mayor Walt Maddox about what's happened since and what is to come. And Tuscaloosa's new river market is now complete, but when you can when can you start picking up your local produce? We'll have the answer. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Terry Brewer. Tomorrow, today marks 11 months since the April 27th storms ripped through Alabama, destroying a large part of the city of Tuscaloosa and also affecting Tuscaloosa County. The question now, where does Tuscaloosa stand in this recovery process? Tuscaloosa Mayor Walt Maddox sat down with WVUA this afternoon. His thoughts on the process of Tus or progress of Tuscaloosa are in our top story at 5. Mayor Maddox says the city is moving forward faster and stronger than he had anticipated. Maddox says almost all debris has been removed from the city of Tuscaloosa and nearly 3,000 building permits and almost 2,000 residential permits have been issued. Maddox says the city is working to get the final debris removed by the one-year milestone, but he wants Tuscaloosa residents to remember the recovery process will take time. It's too easy in this day of 30-second sound bites and, and brief comments to say to measure things in short increments. Let's wait where we are. Let's see where we are at one year, but then let's see where we are at three years, and then let's see where we are at five years, because that will be the ultimate test of whether we got it right or we got it wrong. We'll have much more on this 11-month milestone, milestone since the storms, including the mayor's thoughts on the recovery process and what's still to come before the one-year mark. That's tonight on WVUA News at 6. Continuing to our coverage of storm recovery, it's a new beginning for Tuscaloosa's Rosedale Court. Construction of Phase 1's 88 units started this morning. More than half of the public housing community's 188 units were destroyed April 27th. Officials say since the storm, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development recognized Rosedale as a top priority. Quality of living and, and just overall aesthetics of the projects and, you know, it's just good for the city and it's good for the tenants and, it's, you know, it's also good for us. Officials say phase two of Rosedale's revitalization will include 86 units. The Alabama Housing Finance Authority is expected to announce a decision on the project in June. Well, the new Tuscaloosa River Market is now officially open for business. It sits on Jack Warner Parkway next to the Black Warrior River. Now, the site will serve as the new farmer's market and also for other events like weddings, receptions, and reunions. Manager of the River Market, Christy Bobo, says they spent more than $200,000 in furniture, fixtures, and equipment Director Wendy Riggs told WVUA the new river market will offer something to Tuscaloosa residents no matter what their age. I think it's a, a big part of live, work, and play. And what I think is that we're going to have more people come down here. We've made this a Wi-Fi hotspot so students can come down here and study. We'll be open every Tuesday through Saturday. And the only time we'll close down is if we have a special private event here. First farmer's market will be held one week from today, Tuesday, April 3rd. On the weekend, Jason Watts, salary for Tuscaloosa County's new superintendent. The new education leader will make at least as much as outgoing superintendent Dr. Frank Costanzo. That decision came last night from the county school board, which set that minimum salary at just under $138,000. Some board members, though, had some reservations, saying they were afraid if the minimum was placed at what was once Dr. Costanzo's salary, top-tier candidates might shy away. Now the countdown is on for the 2012 Air Show. And that's right. It's set for this weekend at the Tuscaloosa Regional Airport. The show features the U.S. Navy Blue Angels, Golden Knights Parachute Team, and much more. This year's theme is Honoring Our Heroes. It will feature flying displays ranging from World War II-era aircraft and the Korean conflict to present-day heroes currently serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other locations. The air show takes flight this Saturday and Sunday. Gates open at 9 a.m. both days. 
Flying starts at 10.30 a.m. For more information, go to our website, wvuatv.com. From there, visit the Numbers and Links section. It's a decision that could impact virtually every American. The Supreme Court is now taking up President Obama's health care reform. Few political issues are anything like this one. But for some, it's more than just a debate. It could be a matter of life and death. Medical reporter Elizabeth Cohen speaks to one family who is anxiously awaiting to see how the justices will rule. These nine Supreme Court justices will forever affect the life of three-year-old Violet McManus. Are you worried about what the Supreme Court might do? I'm really scared, very scared, like I can't sleep scared. Violet's mother, Julie, knows if the justices overturn health care reform, Violet will lose her health insurance. Tell me why it's scary for you. Our daughter could die, and there's, there's nothing we could do about it. Violet was born healthy. Then, when she was 11 months old, she had her first seizure. Our daughter was completely blue in her crib and shaking. It was epilepsy. When seizures strike, Violet stops breathing as many as 30 times a day. So she's, she has three drugs, and she has an alarm system, and she has oxygen. Yes. I mean, this all gets expensive. Violet has health insurance through her dad, Matt's work. Great job. It's paid for her care, including several long, expensive hospitalizations. And that's why the McManus family will be watching the Supreme Court decision so closely. If the court gets rid of health care reform, their insurance company could stop paying for Violet's care in as soon as two years. Walk down the steps. Because she'll have met her lifetime limit on benefits. If you could channel your thoughts and wishes to the Supreme Court justices, what would you tell them? If I could say anything to them, I would say, just imagine it happening to your daughter, because it can happen to anyone. So you never, you never know. Life changes. <laughs> Elizabeth Cohen, CNN, Novato, California. Today, Supreme Court justices battled it out to make their points and arguments in the case. Some for the law and some against it. Why do you define the market that broadly? Health care. It may well be that everybody needs health care sooner or later, but not everybody needs a heart transplant. Not everybody needs a liver transplant. What? That's correct, what, I mean, but you never know whether could, you're going to be Could you define the market? Everybody has to buy food sooner or later, so you define the market as food. Therefore, everybody's in the market. Therefore, you can make people buy broccoli. The U.S. Supreme Court is looking at whether the government can make you buy health insurance and slap a fine on those who don't comply. Today was the second of three sessions. Oral arguments wrap up tomorrow. A Supreme Court ruling is expected in June.